I, I, what some, some of us are fighting for is to see that this oppressive system is crushed. We don't care whether, I don't even care whether I would be part of the, of the, of, 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 of the top echelon in the room. I'm not, I'm not worried, but I, I die to see, I, I, I'm dying to see a, a, a change that, you know, in the system. That's all. That's all. I would like to see the young people enjoy it. together. Black, white, enjoying together. In a new Zimbabwe, that's all. Look, we have clothes, food, everything. It's coming from those uh, progressive organizations in Britain and in America and in Sweden. And all over the world. This shoe, I never bought it. Zanon never bought it. Never paid a penny out of it. This is, I think, from Sweden. If I didn't have it, how would I walk? Would I fight? I wouldn't fight. So the man who is, who is fighting in Zimbabwe more than a Zimbabwean is the one who contributed to this shoe. I'm able to plan because I'm putting on a jacket and on a trousers. And who is, who is giving me this? The people in Britain, the people in America. But what about the whites inside Rhodesia? Have you done anything to give them any confidence in ZANU or in their own futures come to that? You know, this is the problem which is really facing us at the moment. And we have always appealed to all our, our friends, all our allies who would like to see this armed struggle succeed, to really uh, tr transmit the message to those uh, people inside the country, whites. They must understand what we are fighting for and what we stand for. But it's what the guerrillas stand for that frightens the whites quite as much as the fear of being killed. They feel their prosperity is threatened by a doctrinaire Marxist dictatorship. What would things be like in terms of ownership of cars, of all the other sophisticated bits of equipment that many Rhodesians, black and white, already do have? Or are they going to all be part of this collective enterprise? Now, what you are trying to say to me, or what you are trying to suggest to me, what has been suggested to us uh, over and over again, is that this idea of socialism will not work. In other words, we are being persuaded to get stuck with capitalism. Now, is it not common sense that when we fight to liberate the country and want to introduce a new system, we should, start, we should look for a system which is different from capitalism. There is an expression in England, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. And I wonder if you look around Europe or Africa, whether you really believe that it's the socialist countries that are more efficient and happier. I'm absolutely convinced that um, I would be happier in a socialist country. How can you be certain that whatever government you set up won't eventually become oppressive, won't be the sort of society where people are frightened of speaking out, or frightened of doing anything without looking over their shoulder? We do not want to create a socio-legal order in the country in which people are petrified in which people go to bed having barricaded their doors and their windows because someone belonging to the special branch uh, of the police will break into their houses. This is what we've been fighting against. Every one of us has been in jail 10 years, 14 years. I, I myself, nine without trial. Every one of us has lived, has had to live scared of the police. How on earth could we create a society which is exactly like that? We don't want it. We are fed up of it. And this is why we are in this revolution for as long as is necessary to abolish this system.